In this video, we'll show you the procedure to find a confidence interval for the mean for a large sample. So you take n observations, x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn, independent and identically distributed samples from some population that has a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, where n is large enough, we say greater than 30 for the purposes of this class. That guarantees that x bar will be approximately normal by the central limit theorem. Then a level 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for mu is x bar plus or minus z alpha over 2 times the standard deviation of x bar. Where this z alpha over 2, this is the alpha over 2 quantile for a standard normal distribution. Note here that the standard deviation of x bar is equal to sigma over the square root of n by the central limit theorem, which is approximately s over square root of n. And s is the sample standard deviation. if you don't know sigma, the true sigma, which you usually don't. So you take the probability density function for z, a standard normal random variable that is normal with mean zero and standard deviation one. You can sketch the probability density function like this. Then the alpha over two quantile, these points that uh, the book is using this notation z sub alpha over two, that quantile. The meaning of these points is as follows. Here we have uh, z alpha over two, and here we have the point on the right-hand side, z one minus alpha over two. So these points are the, the, quant the alpha over two quantiles, which means that the area inside here to the left, area is equal to alpha over 2. And same on the right-hand side. This has area alpha over 2. That means that the area under the curve on the inside here the probability density function, if we integrate it from these points, it has area is 1 minus alpha. Okay, So let's see how we actually apply this in an example. So here's an example. This is one my advisor used to always say that on average, there's one bug per line of code that you write. So when you write a computer program, you write a whole bunch of lines of code. And every time you write a statement or one line, there's an opportunity to make a mistake and have a bug. Uh, so this is a discrete random variable, right? There's either zero bugs or there's one bug or there's two bugs and so forth. No limit to how many bugs you can have on one line. Um, so... Suppose that we uh, then sample n equals 64 lines of code and we count the bugs that we find for each line of code. We get x bar equals say 0 0.8 and suppose the sample standard deviation s equals 0 0.1 
So that is, on average, each line in our sample has about 0.8 bugs per line. Okay, this is, this is a fairly pessimistic example, but that's all right. Then let's find a 97% confidence interval for mu, the mean number of bugs per line of code. So usually we'll, you'll see 95 in here. You might see 99 in here for a confidence interval. Let's do 97 just to do. Okay, so there's a problem statement. So now we got to find alpha to in order to apply this procedure. So alpha equals here 100 minus 97 divided by 100. It should be a proportion, so it equals um, 3 over 100, which equals 0 0.03. And that means alpha over 2 is equal to 0 0.03 over 2, which equals 0 0.015. Now we look up z of alpha over 2 is equal to, so we look this up in the z table, it's the point at which the area under the curve to the left over here using this picture is equal to 0 0.015. Going down here, we can look this up uh, in R. It is Q norm of 0 0.015. So here's, this is the R code. So you plug this in, you get minus 2.17. So we're almost home free now. To construct the confidence interval now, it's just x bar plus or minus z alpha over 2 times s divided by a square root of n. So we just plug in all our numbers here. So x bar was equal to 0 0.8 plus or minus this negative 2.17 and the negative doesn't matter here because we're doing a plus or minus times s is equal to 0 0.1 and square root of n, n was equal to 64 so square root of 64 All right. And this is equal to 0 0.8 plus or minus. So this means that our confidence interval is equal to, we have well, 0 0.8 minus 0 0.027 equals 0 0.77 0 0.773 0 0.8 plus 0 0.027 is equal to 0 0.827 so our confidence interval is 0 0.773 0 0.827 okay this is right here a 97% confidence interval for the population mean and that's it all these problems are, are very similar. 
you can kind of work backwards and they can ask you to find how many observations you need to make your confidence interval small enough. That is, you find n, um, but that's just a different form of algebra. This is a, a really standard problem, so you'll, you'll definitely see it on uh, exams. So you'll want to make sure you know it.